So we're still with our friend the giraffe. Sorry about that. In Kenya, sometimes we do have technical difficulties. The gremlins are out and about, but you're back with us. And of course, this beautiful beast. I'm actually going to sit quietly because I want you to listen as he strips the leaves off of this bush willow. It's actually quite lovely. Isn't that cool? He's uh, using a different technique rather than wrapping his entire tongue around the branch. He's doing it a little bit. He sort of just bites onto it and then pulls left or pulls right depending on which direction the leaves are growing and stripping them off that way. Now that's a much easier technique than what he would have been doing feeding around on the acacias. Typically with the acacias they'll often uh, try and avoid the prickles and just bite off very carefully all the lovely new sweet leaves. Otherwise, the acacia thorns are hollow, not, not on the nigrescent, so not on the knob thorn, it's slightly different, but the rest of the acacia species that we get out here, those thorns are nice and, and hollow, and, they, and they're quite flexible too, so they can use their tongue, and as long as they go you know, with the grain and not against it, they won't get a prickly prick in their tongue, they'll be alright, it's nice and tough, but not using that technique at all. Now, I don't know how long it had actually been feeding on that acacia for, but they do have to move away from those trees fairly quickly. Anything that's got high, high tannin content. And it's amazing, this giraffe is feeding into the wind. I always say this, I always say, I would love to know who figured out that giraffe predominantly feed into the wind. I think that's just an amazing discovery to figure something like that. I think it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and I couldn't imagine how many hours of time spent that particular scientist uh, would have had to almost live with a giraffe to come up with something like that. So I think that that's quite fascinating. But it's loving this bush willow at the moment. And there are many different animals that are going to start to feed on it. We're seeing the elephants browsing heavily on the bush willows. They love to eat the bark on the bush willows too. But also the parrots and things will feed on the seeds. And Kathy, you were wondering if there's a reason why we don't see a lot of giraffe. Well, Kathy, down in the southern sands, I actually used to see a whole bunch but over there, there were, there were quite a few more acacia species. There were a lot of acacia tortillas. So we were actually talking about this the other day. And um, just the various acacia species seem to be a bit more prominent. Whether it's got to do with soil type, um, I'm not, probably that's exactly the reason. So down there, we would see giraffe almost every single day and in rather large groups as well. Same thing, down in the Eastern Cape, I think the biggest herd of giraffe I ever saw together was oh, between easy 20 and 40 giraffe and they're always moving along the acacia belt. So I think they go wherever their favorite food is. But coming into the winter months, they aren't particularly picky about what they're eating. They sort of just got to take what they can when they can. And that's with all the animals. So all the good stuff gets eaten first. And then the unfavorable plants get left to the end. And that's what he's doing now, feeding on all the bush willows. I'm not a particular fan of a bush willow leaf. I don't think it has got any nice flavor. There's the oxpeckers just landing on its back again. I wonder if they're the same two that had the dust bath earlier. But that's lovely, lovely light. And he's a mature boy, this giraffe. He's not young, and you can tell that straight away just by his beautiful color. Isn't he lovely and dark? Look at those patches on his body. Those oxpeckers, are, I think it is the same oxpeckers. They do look fairly dusty, don't they? They don't look as bright as what they normally are. And he is so relaxed. Sometimes you, you take a gamble with giraffes. Sometimes they're so relaxed and they don't mind the cars and they walk right past you. Other times uh, they sort of dart off and, and move straight into the thicket. All right, let's reposition. We'll go around and watch him walk across the road. He's going, he's walking right out in the open, which is really nice. Hello, boy. There he is. Now, Carsten from Denmark, you're wondering if it's true that giraffe are mute. Well, they've done a, an autopsy on a giraffe where they actually opened up uh, the, the voice box and there was no vocal cords. So I've never really heard them make any other noises than snorts and grunts. Um, other than that, I think they don't make too many noises. I've heard people say that they whistle. I've never heard a giraffe whistle my whole life. But again, I could maybe just be missing it. And, and then the last thing is that they did a recent study and they said that giraffe actually hum, which was a very interesting article. And this was all done at night, so that's quite amazing. But just before he disappears, let's take another look at him because he is going to go into a thicket now where there's a whole lot of quarries. So it might be difficult to 
follow him. And because he is a giraffe, and we aren't able to off-road for him, so luckily he is tall, but you can see there's some massive guari trees in there. It's actually very nice. Uh, I need to uh, take note of this, because I'm going to come here to eat all the guari fruit then. Something's caught his attention. He stopped his listening. Giraffe are exceptionally observant. They often spot predators before any of the other animals. Obviously, zebra and impala have also got very, very good eyesight. He's just taking a little breather. Maybe it's because he's finally found a shady spot and he's getting annoyed with the ox peckers. It's difficult for giraffe to find shade, especially coming into the winter months when most of the, the taller trees lose their leaves and become completely bare. No, there he goes. So probably not anything and if there was a predator a leopard or a lion or even a jackal or something just laying off to the road he would have drawn his attention straight there and that's when i've heard them make a strange noise before i don't know how to describe it but it sort of sounded something like this it sounds bizarre but we had a giraffe doing this to a leopard once it was sitting on a termite mound we were looking at giraffe didn't even know that the leopard was there and then eventually they started making this noise a whole group of them and my tracker then spotted the spots moving just about on the termite mound. So that was really nice. I think he's going to disappear into the thicket now. I think we're going to lose this boy. But 